What? <laughs> All right, today we're talking about the game, the myth, the Mega Man Legend. Mega Man Legends is a series about saving the environment, killing cops, and undermining traditional gender roles. Several people are typing now. Mega Man Legends is one of the many Mega Man alterniverses. You got Classic, X, Zero, Battle Network, some other ones, and Legends. But what's important to note is that Legends is unapologetically incredible. These games whip ass even when they're rough, so we're gonna talk about it. It's a simple concept, Mega Man in 3D, but it's hard to spin a cult following out of the ether, right? You need something drumming up interest. So what is it? Kicking the can? The indomitable spirit of humankind in the face of total annihilation? Kicking the can? Again? So Legends goes ahead and drops the premise In a world covered by <laughs> Okay, World's Islands needs power and that job's in the hands of the diggers, people who spelunk caves. Who can say what truly motivates the diggers? Probably food and shelter, I would say. I know this game kicks ass because I played it for the first time this year and wow. PS1 classics, man. Game just works. Elden Ring, more like Smelden Ring. Catch me in my boomer cave, bro. I'm spelunking. It's perfection. This man's stuck on the wall. Janky AI pathing glitches? Perfection! Though I will say the birds on the island are mixed really fing loud. It's like banshees shrieking on the moors. Please stop! The game's cut into a few key spaces the world, the city, and the caves, more or less. You blow in from out of town. Immerse yourself in the world, protect the city from bandits, blow up some wiggly robot penis worms, and meet all kinds of people. It's an endearing experience. So what are we waiting for? Let's get our skirt skirt on and go! The Schmeet on offer, the actual gameplay, is a bit of a stumbling block for some infants because you need to hold the L and R buttons to turn. But some of us have played Steambot Chronicles and Twooey Final Remix with Joy-Cons. So hold that L. Please. And I think it ends up working in the game's favor. Like, most of what you do is run around caves blasting dudes. It's easy. Sometimes too easy if you engage with the RPG mechanics regularly and keep your gun updated. So having to micromanage Mega Man on that level keeps the experience mechanically engaging. It means you're not automatically the scariest thing at all times in a dungeon. <laughs> and considering the era, it's a satisfying play. Upgrading your gun, trying out new sidearms, mastering combat surprisingly enjoyable. Admittedly, some of the bosses put the strain on, like this guy and a couple others are a little too good at forcing the player to jump and dodge with strict timing. Seriously, what is this? What is happening? But you've got sub tanks, you've got a mechanic, you've got a funny monkey bobbing to the beat of the background music. <laughs> You're gonna pull through, you know? It's fine. And the other half of the gameplay, the human side, I guess, is solid too. Just having the option to explore a massive city for PS1 anyway, interact with its characters and complete side quests. PayPal vast sums of cash to the mayor to rebuild the city. Yeah, okay. Game's chunky, but only if you want it to be. There's even an early morality system tacked on, like you have agency as the player to do all the good in the world, or in the Japanese version, kick cats and shoot birds. I like this a lot. Not kicking cats, not animal violence. Okay, rather the devs acknowledging that harming a cat is demonstrably evil, and yes, you should pay more at stores for being scum. Like I alluded to, this is one of the few no thoughts head empty games I've played for the show because really, Game's just good, simple and clean. So why did I even enjoy it? That's not a sell, you know, being strictly good isn't unique or interesting anymore. Lots of stuff's good, but Legends was great. And for once, it's all in the details. It's the dogs mauling you, the ridiculously loud bird chirps. It's kicking the can. It's straight up lying about your identity for no reason. Does this affect morality, lying about your name? It's getting an opening narration and quality cutscenes throughout the game. Fighting bosses in genuinely dramatic scenarios on hardware being pushed to the limit. It's the facial expression. Expressions. Saving Tron Bon, this cynical bandit genius, 
points from a small dog and her falling in love with you made the game in two seconds at a primal level. Mega Man Legends, learn to love again. Everything about Legends is charming. I'm charmed. It took 30 minutes and the dancing monkey, okay? But it's deeper than that. The entire framework of the game mirrors the player entering this new space. Mega Man is an outsider, but does material good for the citizens of Catalox Island, befriends many characters, defends the city, and even helps rebuild it. He is the player, someone who blows in and does all this because it's fun. And you, the player, become invested through the natural arc of the game. And this isn't terribly different from other Mega Man titles. They're still fundamentally about humanity and robots cooperating, putting aside differences. They're human stories, but Legends goes that extra mile, fitting for the most humanocentric Mega Man title. The Bonds are the real stars of the game, after all. That should not be a controversial statement. Where Roll and Mega Man are kinda irredeemably lawful good characters, unless you kick cats. The Bonds do all the cool stuff and get the best lines because they're low-level villains. They need cash. They constantly harass the citizens of the town in search of a payday. And that's just it. They're understandable. They ooze charisma. They steal the show when they're on the screen. And they're antagonists for most of the game, but not all of the game. And the actual villain, Mega Man Juno, highlights the value of the narrative beautifully by comparison. He's a synthetic being programmed to wipe out all life on the island, doesn't question his programmed purpose, talks about it all with a blithe smile. Man's hardly a villain until you make to hinder him, but he's one of the most inhuman things you encounter and wants to destroy everything. Everything you worked for, the women you've PayPal'd, the people you met, the wacky characters who might have done bad things but weren't that bad. Tron Bond can do crimes. I forgive her. When you can succinctly humanize the lower level antagonists, create urgency by threatening everything the player has done meaningfully, you've got a quality villain. Destroying him is an affirmation of life, of humanity, of idiosyncrasy, of your bonds. Mega Man Legends isn't just quirky, cute, funny, whatever. It's hopeful. You actually don't need a ton of lore or a super nuanced villain to tell a compelling story. That's why we're throwing all that sh** out! <laughs> Correctly identifying that the Bonds carried most of the first game's cutscenes, Capcom released a spin-off of Legends, already a spin-off, spin-off Spin-offception, before developing Legends 2. It's okay, I liked it better than Legends, even, for about 20 minutes, but it's got some things holding it back. Like, ignore gameplay a minute, just logistically speaking, this thing's clearly operating on a smaller budget, and if not, guys, what's going on? All the cutscenes are JPEGs and text boxes. Not unacceptable, Twooey did that, but think of the pedigree! The gameplay is basically three styles of play fed into five distinct modes. The basic loop involves doing increasingly difficult levels of these different missions, which means it runs out of gas pretty quick, but holy sh**! It burned hot at the start. First off, you intro as Teasel controlling a mech. Gameplay is just like the first, only I can order around some Lego goons. Then you get beat by some Broadway personality individual, except rewind that sh**. Yeah, okay. I definitely beat your ass for the record. Okay, continue. Then you play the rest of the game as Tron, trying to win capitalism by beating absurd debt interest rates. Truly, Tron is the character of the generation. It's a lot more management heavy than you might expect from a Mega Man game, but it's cleverly dunked in a layer of chocolatey characterization. Lord forgive my writing. Everyone loves the serve bots, okay? Oh, you don't know them very well? Okay, one sec. <laughs> okay, you love serve bots now. Glad to be of service. Managing a team of useless idiots is pretty fun when you get to interact with so many. Unfortunately, they don't switch dialogue up much, but that's fine. There's enough text already. Now, I thought this game was A-plus material because right out the gate, you can wander into town and start, you know, blasting the citizens, demolishing buildings, killing the police. Wow! I mean, wow, that's chaotic and violent and... Jesus! Please tell me. It's all like this? Oh. Most of the modes are cute the first time, but fall off. Box puzzles are fun until they aren't anymore. The first person RPG mode is fun until the formula becomes obvious and just sucks up so much time for no reason. The murder levels are great, sure, but the other modes with Mega Man Legends controls struggle a bit. Okay, bro. Okay, bro. <laughs> 
Glad they kept that in the game. These levels where you steal livestock, I mean... Um. No. At least some of the bosses are fairly enjoyable, and the ruins aren't so much a mission as a dungeon you have to finish to unlock the end game. They're hard to comment on, it's just a dungeon you could run straight through, but you need to acquire certain weapons and upgrades for the mech to complete it. Most of the game is getting, getting money, money, getting, getting power-ups, and getting bored with 90% of the game. But uh, hey! Am I stupid? The final goal of the dungeon is to beat up the end boss, this hippo thing. Hippo bash, apparently. And it's so much harder than the rest of the game. We're talking get blindsided by 30 homing mines, die and restart the dungeon hard. We're talking harder than the final boss hard. We're talking waste 30 minutes of time save stating hard. I, I need you to understand this. So DJ, please spin it. Why is it like this always the same? Every time I play an old game A wall, a pause, a boss, a break Something so hard it must be a mistake I try and try, continue and die Enough that it might make a grown ass man cry But no, I'm cold, the tears never come I think I've forgotten the concept of fun Cause little kids like you come at me with mines And bubbles, mechanics, and awful design I'm sick to my core, can't take it no more But keep sailing forward and onto the shore And I'll make it someday unlike you in your cave Just rotting away so content in your grave I might be trying a little too hard here but at least I got something worth fighting for. So suck farts, hippo bash. Dumb hippo fu So the real value of the game is character, like with Legends. It's undeniably charming, and you might think playing an antagonist from the first game would cause some strain, but it really doesn't. The game goes out of its way to characterize Tron as savvy, dependable, organized, and willing to break the law for money. She's still a villain, tortures misbehaving surf bots in her torture room, but she still does the right thing when it comes to people more often than not. She still acts fundamentally human. You get the sense that she only does bad things like robbing banks because it's all she knows, building robots and making money. And that's the major goal anyway, make a pile of cash and pay off this person. It's a weird game, but worth it for fans. Shoot, maybe even on its own. It's nice to play something relaxed, unbothered, in its lane, flourishing, hanging out with the Bonds, serving up Lego beatings. <laughs> oh, just, oh, why? You made it weird. It's weird now. Everyone is looking at you for being weird. <laughs> what the fuck? Mega Man Legends 2 isn't a controversial title, but that doesn't mean I can't make it one. Imagine expanding on every idea from your simplistic predecessor, shifting the framing from gamey to near cinematic, directly addressing the lore. Playing through this thing takes me back to Dark Chronicle and Pikmin 2. Not because it's bad, but because it's pushing every wall, and sometimes too far. It's wild to watch something as simple as make the money and crawl the dungeon morph into this slowly told tale of past civilizations and ancient secrets. It deals directly with Roll's backstory, Mega Man's origins, even the professor's old colleagues, and none of it is very funny. The monkey's not even bobbing to the music anymore. Why even live? I guess they wanted people to take the story seriously, or just give fans more than what the first game was. But it bears repeating that the first game is basically perfect, works its themes aggressively, trying to take existential dangers beyond mortal comprehension seriously in a Mega Man game is slightly harder than stopping the single robot nuke, you know? Well anyway, everything about one was carried over. Basic gameplay, sidearms, skirt skirt boots, the works. I'm just noticing during the edit here that they reused this trot animation. <laughs> Look at her smoking body. Even the map's not all that much bigger. Sure, it's split into a series of islands you travel between, but we both know that disc's only got so much space. Oh, and nice bosses with mouth coverings, Capcom. I see you. Ain't gotta waste dev money. JPEG swapping when there's nothing there. The gameplay is well varied, though. You can travel around the Mega Man Legends world. That's a huge selling point. And speaking of which, it didn't click that the world was future Earth until I got a quiz in-game that asked, who played a Vita in the movie? Why is this the one I know? What stands out in gameplay is dungeon structure. You're not waltzing through a series of tunnels and rooms in a linear path to a boss fight. They're structured more like Zelda dungeons, with multiple doors in a hub room that are unlocked over time, explored in order, and sometimes retread. It lends a lot of retail weight to the dungeon segments, like I'm not just running around caves, I'm delving this important cave that the devs made with me 
a gamer in mind. I'd argue that the original, using dungeon space that wasn't super distinct, was less colorful but also conveyed a sense of genuine exploration. Like this place just exists, you know, and you don't know what's inside. But in the tropical island, I do the overgrown dungeon. In ice place, I do ice dungeon. In sand place, I do fire dungeon. And that's nice, that's gamey, but it's not the same. That's the key takeaway here. The shift in design from one to two is about injecting ethos and importance. Fit into the narrative of what an important game is supposed to be. If any cave people types are furrowing their brow right now, to be clear, I don't think that's a bad thing. It's just a different thing. But the tone, the heart, feels slightly muted. Tron and Teasel hardly belong in the game. They're not allowed to butt in. Constantly taking a backseat to matters of grave importance. Yippee! Snore! I mean, you still gotta fight through them. Look at this guy, he's popping a bone! That's the first cannon mega bone! And I think something's lost in that. I mean, hey, there's plenty of idiosyncrasy, right? Plenty of weird to go around. Ew, why do they look like that? And you still ingratiate yourself to the citizens of the various islands. There's still room to explore and have fun and belong. It'll take you from an overgrown dungeon to a fortress raid to a massive Ava unit I hope I'm not coming across like I'm bashing this game because it's badass, bro. It's just that sometimes you're forced to do a time trial upgradeless dungeon course to advance the story and whoops, I got stuck and my browser opened and I watched a YouTube video and had to learn buster canceling to advance the game. Just me? Is that just me? Am I the crazy one? It's just that sometimes you walk into that giant robot's boss fight and it's framed like any other boss fight and then you realize after five minutes that you're not doing any damage and the game expects you to walk into the shadowy corner of the room and leave through a door. Something you can't do in a boss fight to continue the dungeon to make it vulnerable. And you know, it's just that sometimes in more than one dungeon, you've got to do these unbearably slow underwater levels, which I gotta tell you, Mega Man Legends controls pretty tight. And having to suffer through this absolute crap, I mean, <laughs> like none of this is evil or wrong, it's just clumsy. Like two's got all kinds of interesting stumbling blocks, either because something was conveyed poorly, or the balance was too tight, or... <laughs> And please, find me a good water level. It's a weird game. Weird coming off one, anyway. Oh, and you've got a pile of money to make before heading into the end game, so get on that grind. Yeah, optimal Mega Man Legends 2 grinding. That's what I like to see. Now the plot takes center stage. It's way more pushed than the original. So let's talk a sec. You start the game on a ship called the Sulphur Bottom. The ship is named Fart Ass. I can't do it. I can't! I'll save myself the trouble. The story's about the same thing as the last game, but on a massive scale. Strange beings trying to kill off the current version of humans living on the planet. It successfully establishes a time abyss, or when in a work of fiction, a great span of time in the past is made known to the reader, and they're made to grapple with the implications of the past on the present. And this is probably one of the issues with making a Mega Man Legends 3. Mega Man's background is spelled out. Rolls background is made apparent. Much of the history that informs the new world is dredged up, and it's hard to top an existential threat to the world itself as a conclusion. Not that it's impossible, there's no reason the stakes can't be lower for the world in a third game and the conflict be more personal. But now I'm grasping at a future that never was. You've probably heard the story of Mega Man Legends before, because it's a cult status spin-off. People adore these games, and they should. They're some of the most interesting Mega Man games, some of the most human, and one in particular is extremely effective at telling a story without doing anything particularly outlandish or shocking. They're weird. They're funny. You can equip your right arm with a beam sword and kill. It's a shame we never got a third, or rather that the third game was cancelled and left mostly finished. And a whole history of hysteria follows that makes sense. Looking back, it seems insane to just leave it on the table. It's free money, bro. What the hell? But that's a part of Mega Man history I don't own and was never a part of, but it's why I think it's important to look back at 
old games. My favorite thing to cover. Hearing all this, you might assume that the games were knockout hits on release, but no. They scored around the mid-70s consistently. They were never looked at as groundbreakers. Shoot, the PC and N64 versions of Legends were lambasted for not adding more content. As though that detracts from what's on offer. As though everyone owns both consoles. And I'm not kidding, it's a way more enjoyable play than your average Assassin's Creed fight me. But that's what people care about with contemporary releases. Dollar value. Comparisons to like software in the same era. Hard to master controls. Other noise that couldn't possibly matter in any other context than the release window. I'd much rather explore a colorful 3D environment than play an arcade 2D Mega Man title. Like, even if the games are short, they pack a lot of side content to fish up. They're strong titles. And they're so aggressively charming. But they never really had the sales or the support from anyone but the fans. But then, when was quality ever recognized en masse? So this is a message to all the Capcom employees who I know watch my show. Look at my hair. Follow the curves. Listen to what the curves are telling you. Mega Man Legends 3! When the fuck? Hey, it's K-Bash. Huge thanks goes out to my $4 patrons whose names are on the screen. The show's finally getting somewhere thanks to the community's generosity. And special thanks goes to my extra generous patrons who are... Adam Welsh, Acropolon, Alex, Andy Blark, Arch, Axon Basement Dweller, BZ Soul, Ben M, Blake Against the Machine, Bohop, Boom Dead, Brios, Brianna Wu, Cal, Can I Cuss on Captain Here, Blasted, Captain Blasted, Captain Wave, Caesar T, Chiefy Boy, Cordis, Chris Bromo, Cody Golden, Couch Mobile, Corgi the Lad, Crater, CW Glassworks, Cynical, Daddy Dagoth, Don Diem, Dakota Storm Jones, Jones Dagg Swag, David ben, Castillo, Dara, Decode, Dead, Dennis Amaya, Diablo, Dr. Cullen, PhD, Dylan Coffee, 8-Bit Funk, Elias, Elpio, Elsa, Aesthetico, Everstone Isle, Exa, Fupa Saiyan, Frankenstein, Frisky Nippler, Glyph Seeker, Goose, 6112, Great, the Darkest Black, Dark Cory, Gucci Plant, Hatsune Miku's Crack House, Archive, Demon, Game and Station, Hex Horn Tiger, Huey, If the world chooses I'm to become supporting my enemy, just I because I wanted to like make I this part of the video have. longer, Ingenious Cloud, I punched a sandwich, Irradiated Cherry, Dice Kyle, It's time to sue, It's not good, Ivy Ruth Langley, Jacob, James, Jason Lang, Jaden, Jay Deus, Joke Frog, Jordan Joyner, Julian My Julian, Keegan Too Cool, Kata Snack, King Kuma, Clock Crated, Crazy Dark Chocolate, Ice, Kyle, KZ Excellent, Lady Dentalian, Latrix, Laundry Mom, Lego Sid, Loadsome Dung Eater, Juan, Low Fat Mogul, Lucas Boyd, Lucky McSmucky, Magical Madman, Mama Rollins, Mara Ganger, Marcules, Mugio, Maximilian Wolfgang Niver, Mike DeVille, Milky Moo Official, Monochrome Only, Mr. Dodongo, Mr. Whiskey 282, Nyranu, Nido Torpedo, Norian, Daridius, Old Bird, Old Man Cranberry, Only LK, The Plant, Pandemic Cowboy, Pinata, PK Gaming, Hockeyfer Hitman, Potato Gaming HD, Quasar McDougal, Quillworth, Quinn, Reasonable Willow, Reggie Rodriguez, Rue, Ryan Mori Brooks, Sagittrash, Siren Smells Good, Salty Smasher, Scribe Slendy, Sakai No Awarda, Shot, Silver Bear 909, Soon. God! Sleepy Wabbit, Suckdologer, Space Lizard, Spooky Grimalkin, Squidget, Squishward, Starbound, Storm Strider, Sublime Cataclysm, Super Sandwich Guy, Sword Chubbington, The Big Bubby, The Salt Knight, Thick Dick Mystic, Thrips Hartrock, Timid the Writer, Travis Edwards, Twiddle Chungus, Vid, Valenrith, Venom, Vice Pup, Viewers Like You, Vic, Waposa, Weeb Trash, Well Shit, Wayland, Where Am I Home, Winter Solstice, Wind TV, Zanny Tanner, Yashi Cheese, Yeet Kundo, Zachary Livesey, Zach Zachary Z, Zanasso, Zane the Impure, Zane the Pure, Zeradax, Zed Slayer Gamer, Zero Zalazar, Sylvlin Ray, Cyberpunk. If you'd like to help support the show, unlock new long-form projects, and help me keep improving, check out my Patreon. We got all kinds of goals and lots more videos in store. Stay tuned for more. K-Bash out.